I felt such an urgency to do this, and I don't even know how to get started or, or what to start with. I did make some notes, and I did um, try and put these things in order. And even in doing that, I am completely amazed at how long it's taken me to get right, get my spirit right. I think I may be pausing this a bit just to gather my thoughts sometimes. I, I pray that this brings encouragement, understanding, direction, clarification, guidance to any and all that hear it. For some basic background that might be pertinent, I'll say that I had a mother that was Roman Catholic and a, a dad that was Protestant. We only went to, by the time I was born, we only went to maybe a few Christmas Latin Mass and Easter Masses, um, I felt not of this world my entire life. Um, I've had visions and occurrences my entire life, though I did not know the Bible. I um, got married in my late teens, early 20s to a Jehovah's Witness. I studied a little bit with them. I did get baptized. I told them about my visions. They told me basically that I was an apostate and that my visions weren't cool. And um, I, for that reason and, and other reasons that had to do with my husband at the time, I left and I didn't look back at organized religion and I didn't look back at the Bible, though I never did not believe that Yeshua HaMasih or Jesus Christ was real. I never doubted that uh, he died for our sins. I just didn't believe the Bible and I didn't believe organized religion and I would almost say that I, I just had a disdain for organized religion. Uh, I went into uh, like a neo-pagan thing, I went into like a witchy craft thing. Uh, let go of that, went into full secular mode, and then I kept having visions, and because I was so resistant to organized religion, I kind of went into the new agey thing because they do embrace energy, they do embrace visions, they do embrace dreams, um, but they don't embrace the Bible. And very, very rapidly and very, very suddenly, I found myself doing a complete 360 and I understand that you know and and it's funny because a lot of the reasons why I rejected this part of me was because of ridicule because the world doesn't like the light and at first I thought it was a personal thing but I just realized that the world is just thoroughly 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 evil um and everything that we know is corrupted. Anyway, very, very rapidly, I have realized that Jesus never let go of me and has been calling me back home. And right now, we're at the end of the line. And looking at the dreams that I've had, I mean, I, I'm not even going to go into to all of them. I'm just, the ones that are pertinent to this right now, I'll say that um, when I started into the new agey type thing, not, not that I was strictly new agey, honestly, because I never read any new agey books, but, uh, what they did is they corrupt the word of the Bible, which is why it resonated with me because I had a experience which gave me a, no a lot of knowledge of, of God, but I didn't realize it at the time. Um. When I first started waking up, 
to the the when I first started waking up to the understanding that let me rephrase this I was able to wake up quickly because the child sacrifice that's going on the pedophilia that's going on and if you're awake 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 you know what I'm talking about the only reason why I didn't scoff at it is because I've had dreams of things when I was up until from from as young as I can remember up until um, probably four years ago had dreams of the things that satanic ritual abuse survivors talk about like specific things that they've talked about and I didn't know I just thought I was having nightmares now I know that I was given those visions to know to wake me up faster and to know how wicked this world is I'm just going to put those out there put that out there for for background <sighs> all right so back in 2002 and I, unfortunately, I was not consistent in writing down dates or writing down times, but bless my, my young little heart, I did write down some of them, which is important for, for today. So this is May 30th. It could be anywhere between... 2001 to 2005. Unfortunately, I just wrote May 30th. Um, listen to this dream. Last night, I had what I think was a telling dream. I was me. I had my sister. We were at a place. <laughs> the government went, and I put in quotes, went bad. There were people in black suits slash uniforms, like dress blues, but black. They were a cross between cops and the FBI and FBI agents with their power. They called for martial law. The government grew intolerant. Oh, and the government had grown intolerant. The Chinese were in, were in, were in league with the black suited people. My sister and I had to go away. We weren't quote unquote wanted, but there was religious intolerance for me. I don't know why my sister had to flee. I think she was just worried or upset about something. We ran down the stairs into an old beat up Cadillac, Cadillac-ish style car. We had me drive because my sister was shaking so much. We drove out of the city. Pretty soon we were in a long stretch of road surrounded by wetlands. This is important. Uh, the wetlands is important. I was concerned and I looked in the rear view mirror and noticed tons of cop cars coming up from behind with their lights on. Uh, I, I want to also note that I don't think I wrote this down, but I remember that um, there were like maybe like Russian or Chinese or it could have been US military tanks but I just remember that there were foreign soldiers on our highways with tanks they weren't shooting at people it was just like an occupation I um, cops coming up from behind with their lights on um, I drove the car off the road and hid it in some bushes I, <laughs> I passed some lovers and a cop car about to bust them. I lose contact with my sister, but she was safe. Uh, there was a kid in the cop car. He was a cop too, about 12 years old. He asks me if I should bust, if he should bust the lovers. I said no. I didn't want to. I didn't want him to draw attention because I was trying to hide. Um, a group of cops came down to inspect the kid and to see what he was about. Um, I ran from him. And I crouched down to try not to be seen. And that's the last bit that I remember from that dream. What I hear now, because back then there, there was no, whether, what, I wasn't really involved in politics or the world stage or anything like that. And, and uh, whether, 
what when I hear news now about the the Chinese or the Russians now making moves, this and and also with uh, the occupant in the White House right now and their ties to China, it has made me extremely aware of what the stream was talking about. It was talking about the future corruption of our government with the Chinese nation and others, and others, other nations. The other, the next stream I want to talk about. Um, so it looks like I wrote the stream after it happened. I'll just read what it says. Don't remember date of the dream, but it was sometime in either 2002 or, um, or the summertime. Um, it starts off in a bricked, a bricked out building, an industrial style building with very little light. It was like a dank warehouse. I should, I should have said that. Three biblical figures were in the room and you know, I, I wasn't and I'm very, very, very new to reading the Bible. I mean like this calling has come upon me in the past couple of weeks, like girl, get your act together. So back then I wasn't strongly familiar with biblical figures and I couldn't tell you who they were. Three biblical figures were in the room. Uh, two faces of, I don't know what that says. I saw someone or something, oh, it was, I think it was, must have been Job and Noah, because those are two names I have scribbled out here. Um, I saw someone or something push Job out through the wall, the brick wall, pushing the bricks out and letting the sunlight pour into this, like, warehouse. I walked through the hole and saw a street in disarray. People running every which way. I was near a strip mall, and behind the buildings that lined the street were tall, towering cranes. Now, these cranes were huge. This is one thing that has stuck with me for years, and this dream happened over a decade ago. And, at the, and most of my life, I lived in um, rural or suburban areas. Uh, in the last five or six years or so, I've moved to a metropolitan area and this summer I was driving on the highway and saw exactly the silhouette that was in my dream which cued to me I've got to go like it's time to go it's it's just time to go um which is one of the reasons why I'm urgently getting this out there um that there were towering cranes trying to build up and up and up and up and up they were trying to build these buildings as, as big as they could make them, as high as they could make them. People were afraid, but I don't think they knew what of. So they were just running around panicking. The cranes I knew were building constructions too high and they were gonna crash in on all the people. I started grabbing people. One was a Jehovah's Witness. Remember, I had married a Jehovah's Witness, um, but this would have been after our marriage, I believe. Um, I ran out of the city uh, and above it. So I, I, I remember running through kind of like a, a mountain or a, a cliff top almost. And I ran through a gated area similar to a baseball dugout. It was long and narrow and it was caged in. I knew that we would be safe. So I had a bunch of like um, just people with me, kids with me. Um, I knew that we would be safe there and um, in the distance, once we were in this gated area, uh, the city looked like it did, the cranes didn't pull the, the buildings down. It was almost as if from the distance, it looked like the ground of the city just opened up and swallowed it. Like the, they were leaning in and down um, and um, it was total destruction of the city. And the next dream I had, um, it says fall of 2003. Okay. One of the most beautiful dreams I've ever had is, is or was, <laughs> so simple. Um, okay. 
I'm going to correct some of this only because, you know, some of these I was writing right when I woke up, so they're a little, uh, little shoddy. Um, so I right here, I was on a planet which seemed to have no atmosphere, but really what it was, it was, it would be more accurate to say that it felt like I was on the surface of the moon because the earth was in the background and um, it was like, the ground was like just barren. It was like a void, a, a voided planet. It seemed to have no atmosphere, meaning no sky, just space. Oh, huh, I did put it. Like, like on the moon. I was standing in a field, an orchard, rows and rows and rows of trees, barren trees, with the branches hard and naked. I walked forward in a vacuum-like space, no sound. It was so silent. There are no stars. The only thing I could see was the earth in the background. No stars at all. So when people, I, I'm not even going into that, sorry. Uh, no sound. I saw a man. I realized it was Jesus. And uh, as a side note, because I was so angry at organi organized religion, I wanted, I wanted to not believe that this was Jesus speaking to me. I wanted it to be like symbolic of or something like that. But here now today, no, I understand that it, that this was Jesus. He was in simple clothing. He never spoke with his mouth to me. He just like projected into my head. I remember thinking about the barrenness of the land with a negative feeling. He looked at me and we stood facing each other about two and a half feet apart. He spoke into my mind saying, and, and this is, he, he wasn't speaking in, well, first of all, the presence and energy of Yeshua is so loving and compassionate and kind and understanding and strong um I, my head went to like maybe his armpit he was tall and strong and big and the most calming presence you could ever ever imagine um reassuring but in a way where you know that he knew everything about you and still loved you. Every, every dirty little nasty thing you could possibly hide, he knew of you and still loved you. Um, he basically downloaded into my mind this understanding that everything is made up of everything else in the universe. Like, you know, the cliche, and I didn't know this back then, but the cliche were made of stardust type thing, um, but I didn't know that back then. At the same time, he took a cherry between his fingers. Now remember, the trees in this orchard, row by row by row, they're all barren. And he had a cherry between his fingers. And he placed the cherry in my mouth. And as I chewed the fruit of the cherry, really it dissolved in my mouth. I didn't really chew it. It just kind of dissolved. The cherry part was sweet and it dissolved into my mouth. Um, placed in my mouth. And as I chewed the fruit, the inedible, inedible pit became a swirling galaxy universe in my mouth, alive and pulsing with energy. And I understood everything and related. Everything is related to everything else. And the other thing that was downloaded to me at this time was like this understanding that the whole time... Everything that happens, though we have free will, we can decide to sin because God wants us to love him voluntarily. Like, we can decide to live a life in sin. Um, he will not force us to love him. Satan will, which is why uh, what's going on now with the jabby jab, you know that it's satanic when something is wanting to coerce you into something. Um, everything was is like a giant... Um, you know those cogwheels that interlock and they kind of rotate? <laughs> Everything is that. Everything is that. Um, the universe is a giant clock. And all the parts, my life, your life, everyone's life, is, is like a, a part of this clock. Um, uh, as I understood 
As I understood this, I smiled. And as if synchronized with the movement of my smile spreading across my face, um, the trees began to grow leaves and fruit. It was a full, healthy orchard. And I turned back to him and he lifted me up first like half a foot off the ground and then like a foot off the ground and then a foot and a half off the ground and then all of a sudden I was liberated and I was just, I was just taken up. I was just up. Um, after, and I just have a footnote that says somehow after the first half foot he wasn't touching me. So at some point he was just like mind lifting me up um, into the air.